Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez, and today I'm gonna to go over five more portrait retouching mistakes to avoid. I have another video where I went over the first five portrait retouching mistakes to avoid. So in case you guys wanna check those out, you can check out the link that's gonna be in the top right corner of the screen right now, or in the description area below. Every single thing that I'm gonna be talking about in this video and in the other video are all things that I have done myself. So if you do any of these mistakes right now, don't feel bad, just learn from it and then continue. Before I continue, I do want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community filled with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like exploring skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity with Skillshare. Skillshare has classes on photography, graphic design, productivity, marketing, and so much more. You guys definitely need to just go onto Skillshare and check out all the classes for yourself. One class that I personally looked into recently is called Context is Key, Social Media Strategy in a Noisy Online World by Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm actually a big fan of Gary, so I wanted to check this class out and see if there's anything that I can learn about marketing. One interesting thing that he brought up was how people are psychologically closer to a brand by just a simple action like tapping a like on an Instagram post. It has a lot of interesting information in this class, so I definitely recommend it. Skillshare was made to learn, so there's never any ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow where your creativity takes you. If you guys are interested in trying Skillshare out, the first thousand of you to use my link in the description area below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. When you guys support the people that support my channel, it allows me to keep making free content for you guys, so definitely check out Skillshare. Also, my friend Joe Baker creates different types of photography shirts like this one right here with the exposure triangle. So in case you guys are interested in this shirt or any of the other shirts that he makes, you can check out the link in the description area below. Okay, so the very first retouching mistake that I wanna talk about today is creating max dynamic range in a photo. And what I mean by that is when people take a great photo and they just increase the shadows to the max and decrease the highlights to the lowest possible point, and create a very, very dull and not so good looking image. This is still something that I see happening pretty frequently nowadays. So if you guys do this mistake yourself, please just, you know, allow some shadows, allow some highlights into your photos because I promise you that they can still look pretty good in your images. So let me go ahead and just increase the exposure just a little bit. I think it's a little off by like maybe 0.4, maybe 0.3. Um, it looks pretty fine now, but let's go ahead and just add the retouching mistake, which is adding a lot of, or actually taking a lot of highlights away from the photo and then adding a lot of shadow to the photo. And I'm gonna go ahead and just increase the exposure just a little bit more. And I think it's fine now, but yeah, you can see pretty much everything, every detail in the shot and in a bad way and not so great way. Again, like I said before, allowing some highlights to be a little bit borderline blown out or properly exposed and some shadows to be a little bit lost is totally fine. It kind of gives a little bit more depth to your images. So again, if you guys do this mistake, you know, kind of just ease up on that and allow some of the natural beauty of the shot shine through. The very next retouching mistake that I want to talk about is obvious clone stamp removal, using the clone stamp kind of in a very obvious way in Photoshop. And a lot of people do this for different reasons, but what I've seen in the off-camera flash community is that people leave a flash in the shot, maybe even a whole light setup in the shot, and they don't do a very good job removing it using the clone stamp. Now that I'm in Photoshop, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I would messily, not so cleanly, in other words, remove this modifier from the shot. So let me go ahead and just get a blank layer, zoom in a bit to the top left, kind of just focused on that modifier, and then get the clone stamp, which is, I think S is the shortcut for everybody. Let me go ahead and just change the size of the brush and then get to started, get started working on this. Just go ahead and just do it kind of messily. And if I was doing this myself, of course I would be a lot more cleaner with it. But again, I'm just doing this kind of quickly to kind of show you guys how people mess this up a lot. Now I'm done. So let me just zoom back out and Obviously it's not the best job, but that's exactly what I wanted to highlight because whenever I see this, to me, it's very obvious because of these repeating patterns going on throughout the shot. In this image, I kind of intentionally showed you guys repeating patterns with these pair of pokeballs or whatever this is going on right here. And you guys can see it's going on very much throughout this photo. And whenever I see this mistake going on, that's pretty much exactly what I'm seeing. Just these exact repetitions of, of certain patterns going on and it kind of just screams to me like they didn't do a good job in removing whatever they wanted to remove in their shot. Whenever I try to remove something from my own photo, I try to be very careful with it and try to get unique patterns throughout the image and try to even create new patterns by 
kind of meshing different things going on in the background. So I would just kind of just caution anybody who does it the messy way like this mistake and just take a little bit more time to make it so not so obvious so that you can create a natural looking image. Retouching mistake number three for this video is gonna be sky replacement. And not just sky replacement in general, but bad sky replacement. And I'll show you guys exactly what I mean right now in Photoshop. I'm in Photoshop specifically because it's the only program that I have that has sky replacement. Maybe Lightroom does have it, but I'm in Photoshop for now because I like it better. So let's go ahead and just add some sky to this background and see how that looks like. Yep, sky replacement's right there. And I'm gonna leave it with this guy because I know that it's gonna be, yep, this guy is more in focus. I'm gonna click okay. And the reason why this is a retouching mistake is because it just throws the whole idea of what should be in focus out of whack. If this guy was that much in focus, then these trees around her, the, a lot of things on the ground around her in the background should also be in focus because just that's just exactly how depth of field works. If that sky is in focus, then the things around it should also be in focus. If you wanna make it more realistic, then you could add some blur to those clouds. And I think I've done that before, but you just have to make sure that the depth of field actually looks realistic. And what I see when people do this mistake is they just leave it so much in focus like it is in this shot here. And sometimes I also see mistakes in terms of blending that sky into the background. In my photo, as I'm scanning it right now, I can see that a little bit of cloud right here blends into this pole. So yeah, just try to make sure that if you're doing this mistake, blur those clouds a little bit, see how that looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a quick, you know, jab at trying to make the sky look a little bit more realistic. And even at this point right here, it looks pretty good. Another thing that's going on with the sky replacement is it changed the tones. Let me go ahead and just toggle this off and on. It changed the tones throughout the image as well. So just be, just be more cautious with sky replacement. And if the sky's in focus, then everything around the sky needs to also be in focus. So yeah, just make sure that it makes sense. Mistake number four is something I don't really see often anymore. And that's a good thing. But in case you're starting out and you think it looks good, just know that it doesn't really look good for the most part when anybody does it. And that's gonna be selective color that's making something specifically one color, the only thing in that photo that has color and everything else is black and white. Again, I'm not saying that you can never do selective color and make it look good, but just for the most part, it kind of gives that feeling of it, you know, back in the day when people used to do it all the time, you know, outdated kind of look. So let me go ahead and just jump right into the shot and see what I can do to make it look um, bad. I zoomed into the dress just a little bit so that I can be a little bit more focused on, you know, selecting stuff to black and white and in, in color. And actually it kind of kind of goes with the last retouching mistake video where I said people usually are a little bit messy in terms of masking and making stuff glow. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and get a black and white adjustment layer. Everything's black and white. And now I'm just gonna kind of just paint it off of the dress so that it's the only thing that has color. So let's go ahead, actually make the edge harder. And let me go ahead and just be very, very quick about it. Okay, so here's the dress. Let me zoom back out. And yeah, if you guys think it looks good, I don't know what to say. And I just hope that you avoid this yourself. But if you find clients that like this look, go ahead and do it. You know, if you get paid, Good for you. The very last retouching mistake that I'm gonna talk about today is something that still goes on very much everywhere, all over the world, new photographers, old photographers, and that's gonna be liquify and liquefying in not so realistic way or in a very obvious way. I can demonstrate this very easily because there is a pole right next to Victoria. So I'm gonna use the fact that this pole is close to her to do some liquefying and make it very obvious that I am liquefying her on this shot. So let me go ahead and just get that liquify tool. And let's say I wanted to go ahead and make her waist a little bit slimmer. So let me go ahead and just do that. And then we go ahead and just, let's see, let's see if I wanted to make the, I don't know what else I could do. Maybe if I wanted to make this leg a little bit slimmer too, then I could just do this. And yeah, stuff like this is also <laughs> not so realistic, but let's go ahead and just zoom out or actually click okay and then zoom out and see how the <laughs> see how that looks like it's not so realistic of course i wanted to make it very obvious because again people do this 
And sometimes they'll get caught, like some celebrities out there, they'll post a photo and you'll see stuff warped next to them and they're doing liquefied to their photos, you know, like different apps out there that can do that. But yeah, if you guys do this, make sure that you do it in a realistic way or in a subtle way so that it's not so apparent like it is in this shot. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys found this video helpful or fun, or you liked the last video and like this one, and you wanna see another video with more retouching mistakes, let me know in the comment section below. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.